Alright guys, welcome to the first episode of my new series. Uh, basically in this series, I'm just going to be reviewing photo books that I have. Uh, I don't really have a name for it yet, but I'm going to roll with it anyways. Uh, right now, I'm going to be reviewing photo books that I have in my personal collection. I have about 20 right now, and all these are ones I bought with my own money. just think that's something I should probably get out of the way first real quick. But uh, first of all, I'm going to go over a series of books that are pretty prolific, but I, I feel like they're a little bit underappreciated. Maybe not everybody knows about them, and I think they're worth knowing about. And these right here are the Books on Books, and they're published by, uh, I think it's Erta or Errata Editions, and they have about 30 of these on the market right now. And these are all reprints of pretty well-known photo books from the past. Right here you can see, uh, this is Bad Weather by Martin Parr, that's a pretty well-known one. Uh, right here we have Drum by Crass uh, Clement. And lastly, and not least, definitely my favorite, we have Sweet Life by Ed Vander Elskin. And uh, all these right here are black and white. Uh, they do publish some in color, but it just happens the three I have are black and white. I'll try to pick up a color one or two at some point in the not-too-distant future. And uh, these books are pretty cool because they're all uh, reprints of photo books that are pretty well-known and usually older. And uh, a lot of the books are hard to find, so they've uh, you know reprinted them, which is pretty cool. But uh, there is a little bit of uh, contention about them because they have a particular way of uh, printing them that some people don't like. I, I bought these on Amazon. I noticed in the Amazon comments of a couple of them, people kind of criticized them because they have this manner of kind of scanning the entire original book and they don't just have the photo they actually have the the kind of white space and even you can see the uh the edges the kind of cover poking out and everything and they leave some extra white space and some people said that was kind of a waste of space and everything and that wasn't the best possible quality they could get and i kind of see that but um at the same time most of these books are pretty old and they're going to be hard to find and they're probably going to be expensive if you find them so the fact they're reprinting them is pretty cool and they didn't just do a total reprint they include some extra stuff but uh i think i'll get to that in a minute Right now, I'll just show you some of these photos. This particular one again is um, Sweet Life, and it's sort of a sort of a travelogue and also sort of street photography. You can see the photographer has a he does have a really good eye for street photography. He's got some just some cool composition. I like his black and white. It's very stark black and white with not a whole lot of gray in between. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I like that look. Um, he's got a lot of travel stuff. He went all around the world in a trip back in the 1960s, and uh, he went to Africa. These are from Africa. He went to Hong Kong. He went to Japan. He went to the U.S. Uh, so he went all over the place, and uh, he took some really cool photos, and I just really like him. He's got all sorts of different stuff. He's got some sort of street portraiture there, and he's got all sorts of other things. Uh, there's a lot of stuff from Japan that's pretty cool. I think that's more around here. Yeah, these are from Japan. There's some sumo wrestlers and stuff. Got some other stuff. Not exactly sure what that is. Looks kind of interesting. Not really sure what that is either. But yeah, he's got some very interesting stuff in here. And again, you back, get back to the more street photography type stuff. He's got some really cool kind of close-ups and everything. The guy with the radios, I think, is really cool. And I think that these are from Hong Kong, I think. I'm not sure about those. But again, he's, he's just a lot of really cool photos in here, like you'd expect from a photo book. And uh, a lot of variety, too, because he's got some landscapes. He's got some kind of portraiture. He's got more straight-up street photography. So there's a lot of variety in it. But uh, one interesting thing about these books that I was going to get to is in the back... Uh, you can see right here, the original book was in German, so they kind of, uh, they noted the captions, like what page uh, the caption goes with and everything, and translated into English, which is, you know, preferable if you're an English speaker. But they also include stuff like contact sheets. Um, there's also, as far as I know, all of them have some contact sheets, and they also have sort of an afterword or an essay at the end that's normally written by some sort of um, art critic or historian or something, and it just talks a little bit about the... Um, kind of about the project and how it worked out and how it played into the overall the uh, photographer's career and everything and how it, sometimes how it's held up over time even though it gets a little more opinionated but uh, those are pretty interesting because there's a little bit about the photographer himself it's kind of he's a pretty interesting character fortunately passed away in 19 uh, uh, in uh, 1990 but you know he's definitely definitely lived a pretty full life there got to travel around and uh, take some really cool photos and here this is kind of interesting you can see he actually did the layout himself you know back in the 60s they didn't have InDesign and stuff so he kind of sketched it on pieces of paper, which is kind of interesting. I'm kind of surprised they included that, but it is kind of cool. And uh, I think that'll pretty much be it for this one. So let's move on to Drum. And this one is pretty cool because uh, all the photos in it were taken in a single night in the same bar in Ireland. And uh, has, the photographer had a pretty interesting way of going about this. You can see he starts off, he does a couple of pretty generic kind of, um, I guess, establishing shots where it's more like scenery and everything. And then he uh, goes into the bar, and in the back he actually talks about how he, um, when he wanted to take the photos, he talked to the bartender, and the bartender was kind of skeptical at first, he thought it was kind of weird, he wanted to come in there and take photos, but uh, he started talking to him, and uh, he found out that um, the bartender's mother had died recently, 
and the photographer's mother had also died recently, so they kind of hit it off and started talking about that and how difficult it is, even when you're an adult, to lose your mother and everything. And then he was kind of accepted more into the scene, and uh, he just started snapping away and taking photos. And it's kind of interesting, because you see, with a lot of them, he focused in on this one particular character, this old man who's there. He's always kind of alone, always kind of drinking, kind of a sad-looking fellow, but he's also kind of an interesting... I don't know how to put it, just kind of an interesting character. He's got a memorable face, that's for sure. And he has uh, a lot of photos of him. And he, uh, he makes some comments about that in the, uh, the, con yeah, the afterword and everything. But uh, definitely some interesting photos. A little tragic to kind of see that guy there, but I guess you see somebody like that in pretty much every bar, really. And once again, we get to the back, and uh, there's another afterword somewhere. I think there's also a few contact sheets. Let's see. Uh, not much in the way of contact sheets. You got that one right there. But then you can see there's an after, there's uh, the afterward. I think uh, there's one written by an art critic, but there's also a pretty extensive one written by the photographer himself. And uh, it's it's pretty interesting just to uh, see that. And then you also got sort of a biography talking about his other work and everything. Or actually, this is where the um, uh, where it started out. The exhibitions and everything, where and when they were shown. Kind of an interesting little history about the project. So that's kind of a cool one. And lastly we get to uh, what's probably the best known one, uh, Bad Weather by Martin Parr. Martin Parr of course is a magnum photographer, very well known. Uh, despite that I gotta say, out of these three books, this one is my least favorite. I'll just go ahead and say that. Uh, we can take a look inside. It's not a terrible book, but uh, I just feel it's a tad bit on the lazy and haphazard side. I mean he just has a whole bunch of photos of bad weather, literally. There's kind of some flooding, uh, some heavy rains, more rain goes on. There's, there's a lot of other stuff. There's a lot of snow ones later on. You can see snow drifts piled up and just kind of the snow coming down. Uh, it's interesting. This particular photo right here um, is actually in the other photo book, Magnum Contact Sheets, and it has this photo and one other from the collection and the contact sheets that go along with them. So that's just kind of an interesting note right there. So apparently Martin Parr himself actually like the, these photos, and particularly this one, a whole lot. Uh, again, you got more just kind of people walking around. You can see some kind of snow and everything. I'm not blown away by this one. I don't think his flash usage is that great, because you can tell he uses a flash, especially on these. And it's not terrible, but I, I just don't feel like it's all that great. Kind of funny, you got a photo bomber back there. And these photos were all taken, uh, they're kind of spread out. I think they were taken over a period of about like six years or so. And I kind of feel like afterwards, I just kind of looked at it and hobbled this together as sort of a, hey look, here's a bunch of photos that are vaguely related, let's put them into a photo book. And uh, I'm not exactly a huge fan of that. I don't, I don't feel like there's much of a focus other than the fact that it's all kind of vaguely weather related. And there's a lot of different types of weather too. It's not just snow, there's also flooding and stuff, which I think is a little weird. Uh, but you know, not terrible. Uh, again, we got contact sheets. Uh, there's a forward for some reason at the end. I guess that's actually the Ford from the original book. Yeah, it looks like it's got references and everything. And then, of course, you'll have sort of an afterword and some of the history on the project. More contact sheets, that kind of stuff. Even more contact sheets. Uh, so, again, something pretty interesting. Yeah, once again, you have the um, kind of the history of wh when and where it was displayed. So, something pretty interesting. And then you've got the covers from his other books, which I think are a lot better, personally. But that's just me. And uh, I think that's going to be it right now for the books on books. So I would definitely suggest trying to pick one of these up if you can. If you look around, you can find some of them on Amazon. Uh, some of them are as cheap as about $25. Most of them run more in the $30 to sometimes $40 range. If you go to their official website, they have almost all of them. I think some of the earliest ones might have gone out of print, but they have the vast majority of them. They get a little bit more expensive. I think they normally run from the $35 to $45 range, but they'll have quite a few of them. So you might want to check these out. If you want to learn more about photography, I would definitely suggest picking up a few of these. Uh, even if you already have maybe the original books in some cases, it might be worth it to pick these up just because the additions, the contact sheets, and the, the kind of history and the afterword and stuff. Because the afterword was usually written a couple years after the book was published, and it kind of gives you an interesting retrospective on how things, you know, kind of fell in place or how things ended up. Definitely worth picking these up and, uh, you know, just taking a look. Adding a little something to your photo, collection, photo book collection and not spending a ton of money while doing it. So uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. I'm going to try and do a few more. I've got a few things planned. I've got a few books in particular, and I'm actually trying to contact some of the photographers and, you know, get a little, uh, at least a little bit of their opinion. Maybe not a whole lot, but a, a few words I can kind of pass on. So look forward to that. 
hopefully I'll be publishing one in the next couple weeks. So, yeah, that's it for now.